Historian Arnold J. Toynbee said that the Philippines is a Latin American country that was transported to the Orient by a gigantic marine wave. Like many Latin American countries once colonized by Spain, the Philippines is a Hispanic country. Zapatos, relo, vestida, bintana. These are only some remnants of Spanish colonization. Many we take for granted. Many we don't even realize. After all, the Spanish didn't just change our speech, clothing, tools, or food. They changed our way of life. Does that mean we're Hispanic? What defines a Filipino? Legally, according to the Constitution, those who are born here, what we call use soli, the right of the land, use parentum, the parents, use legis, naturalization. They are Filipino, but does that mean they are Filipino to the core? We hope they are. But from the concrete 24-hour uh, li life, what is Filipino? What embodies Filipino? Some may say that it is Catholicism which led to the Philippines being known as the only predominantly Catholic country in Asia. But Christianity was not the first faith to be widely practiced in the Philippine archipelago. Um, the major belief system has been Islamic in, in general because the coming of uh, Spain in 1521 had been antedated by the coming of Islam at least two or three hundred years you know, before Magellan arrived in the Philippines. Although the whole country then was not Islamized, but uh, we could say that the major centers, especially trading centers like uh, Manila at the time, uh, Holo and Maguindanao had been Islamized. Much of present-day Manila, in fact, was ruled by Raja Sulaiman, whose kingdom was the first major political institution established in Manila. Sulaiman resisted the Spaniards this defeat proved to be the turning point for the Spanish who came not only to convert, but to colonize. Once the Spanish introduced Christianity, life in the islands changed. The people who had kept to their own angkan and barangay came to live together as a community in towns centered around churches. Christian teachings also helped to do away with the practice of slavery and other native practices the Spaniards considered uncivilized. One of the things the Spaniards thought uncivilized was the way native women conducted themselves. Their behavior did not meet the Catholic idea of how a proper woman should be. If we're talking about Hispanization, we're talking about a transformation uh, culturally speaking, and culture would uh, encompass values, especially you know, values, meanings you know, that the values convey, uh, plus, of course, the ways of living. Um, so, we can see that women, um, as the ones who reared children, because they were the ones who um, bore the children, raised them in their early childhood, and even well, all the way to adulthood, practically, uh, would be the main transmitters of those values. Uh, this is also something maybe not so well considered. Women were considered a uh, quote unquote a civilizing in influence, Civil civilizing in the Spanish sense, hmm? uh, not only of um, uh, being more human, but by being more human, being more Christian. But while Christianity transformed the natives' culture forever, Filipinos also redefined Christianity and made it their own.
for me, one dramatic way by which Christianity has been modified in the Philippines is the Good Friday procession, which is really the most important event in most Philippine towns. Um, you know, before Christianity came, the, the body of the Datu was kept in a coffin. It was kept in the innermost part of the house together with all the valuables. Um, because people believed that the, the Datu would protect the house against intruders. Okay, now it's interesting that in the Philippines today, the body of the dead Christ, the statue, the Santa Entierro, as well as the Virgin, the Virgin Mother and all the saints, they're kept at home uh, and they're brought out in procession. You see, in Spain and Mexico, this is not done. The Spaniards came not only to extend the reach of Catholicism all over the globe, but to also gain a foothold in Asia and become an international, political, and economic power. To establish the Philippines as a trade outpost, the Spaniards naturally had to change the economic system in the islands. Before the arrival of the Spaniards, the system of exchange or the system of the economy was based on barter. This means to say that uh, people exchange goods with other goods. So it was not uncommon for people, for example, to exchange rice with other commodities like cloth or abaca, things that would be, I would say, utilitarian, something that they can use in their ordinary way of life. This, uh, in a way, conformed to the uh, generally communal system that was practiced in pre-Spanish Filipino society. Coinage from Mexico called reales, and later pesos fuertes, circulated in the Philippines throughout the centuries of Spanish rule. The name was later adapted by the Americans into what we now know as the Philippine peso. Religion, social norms, politics and economy. Spain influenced not only material objects, but also more intangible things, including how we view the world. What do these Hispanic influences mean for our Filipino culture? What is Filipino national identity? As I just said, it is in the small things of life. Now, is it possible to be Filipino if we reject the Spanish influence? No. You cannot be Filipino if you go to work in simply bahag. You reject pantalon. You will wear only zapatos. Those are Spanish words. And then we cannot have agriculture if you don't use the arado, again a foreign word, araro. So on that score, it's wrong to reject Spanish, Hispanic influence, and I would add Mexican. Does that mean that we would be less Filipino if not for the Spaniards? We have to recognize some degree of contributions, you know, of, uh, um, of Spain in the Hispanization of the country. But I guess we could not continuously fossilize ourselves in living in a delusion that uh, we are Hispanic. I think. Uh, uh, we recognize that, but uh, we have to note that uh, the 300 years had been antedated by our legacy and heritage of our Malay and even Islamic, you know, legacy. Just how significantly did the Spanish colonization shape who we are now? To analyze these questions further, Vibal Foundation presents more Hispanic than we admit, a scholarly collection of essays which explores the hybridity of Philippine culture and society. Edited by Isaac Donoso, the book contains essays by distinguished scholars, including Dr. Fernando Sialcita, Marias Vetlana T. Camacho, Julian Go, Celestina Boncan, Resil Mojares, Julkip Liwadi and Ambeth Ocampo.
It also features an introduction by Father Jose Arcilla, S.J. The compendium is bookended by highly respected and eminent scholars from the two countries. Ray Ileto, author of the landmark Passion and Revolution, and exponent of writing history from below, and Maria Dolores Elizalde of the Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Científicas, a passionate Filipinista and advocate in pursuing the continuing dialogue of España and Filipinas. I think by reading this book, Filipinos can get a perspective of history that is lineal, stage after stage, as an empirical process in which human beings use different cultural elements to create their own civilization. Therefore, in this case, the Hispanic elements in Philippine civilization is something that Filipinos can use to craft their own identity and sense of nationhood. These cultural elements are something that can help Filipinos to better understand the current situation of the nation and to face the challenges of the 21st century. There is much in the book that will surprise present generations of Filipinos. That the first Spaniards to discover the archipelago were perhaps Muslims from southern Spain. That many of their ancestors were willing accomplices of the Spanish military expeditions. That Christianity, as the Spanish friars introduced it, is no longer what it was, but something transformed and Filipinized. That many contemporary Filipinos continue to generate a respectable amount of literature in Spanish. That works on the colonial period by Spanish historians, such as Wenceslao Retana, were impugned by the Americans to justify their imperialist enterprise. In spite of being the product of centuries of colonial rule and of being perceived as a symbol of oppression, the Hispanic elements in our culture have become integral in defining the Filipino experience. To remove what is Hispanic in us would mean removing an essential part of ourselves. What we think is Hispanic is Filipino. What we think is foreign is really our own. More Hispanic than we admit. This book will help young Filipinos unearth their Hispanic identity. They have a right to know how their Hispanic past informs both their present and their future.